Welcome to Highlands Presbyterian Church. We hope you enjoy listening to the message for today. We are going back to basics as our theme for the year. Each week we will add another brick as we build on the layers. Good morning, friends. How are you? Um, before I share the words, I have a small letter to read to you. A very small letter. Um, I suppose many of us know this. Uh, when I came in, um, I was only one year in season, and the year is fast approaching to its end. So the church has to come to a moment of prayer and discernment again. Should we continue with Pascal or should we look for another minister? So this is the letter to the church. <coughs> I write to you this day with a call to be patient in prayer. As you may know, the presbytery of Zimbabwe, to which our congregation is bound to, in 2023 resolved to waive the status of Highlands Presbytery from being a calling congregation. That is, a congregation with the right to call a minister of their choice to be one in which the presbytery. A this followed more than a year long process in seeking a minister to replace Rev. Mark Phillips, who had re- resigned from serving at Highlands Presbyterian. The vacancy committee that the congregation put in place had steadfastly been praying, descending, and searching for a minister within the UPCSA to pastor in shape of the congregation at Highlands. Later, Presbytery proceeded to appoint Rev. Pascal for one year, of which the period from the date Rev. Pascal was appointed is fast approaching its end. This entails that the status of Highlands Presbytery and the continued stay of the minister has to be reviewed. The Highland session has since met with the Presbytery representatives with a view to have our right to call me instead. This will, be, this will enable the congregation to start the calling process again. If the Presbytery, which is said to have its city in the coming few, few weeks, agrees to reinstate our calling status, there will be an interim minister or moderator who will join with us for three months as we work on the calling process. We should be concluded by the end of August. So, me, Pascal Swire, I will continue to be in your midst, praying, worshiping, and fellowshipping with you. In this season, friends, Let's hold on to these words. The Lord is good to those who hope in Him. To the one who seek Him, it is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Lamentations 3, verse 25 to 26. Amen. We are coming to our sermon for today. Maybe some of your questions we can talk outside as we finish up at the casino. Uh, today my theme is Hagias Numa. Do you know who's Hagias Numa? Hagias Numa is my friend. I met Hagias Numa during the week. I was so angry. You know, last, uh, the previous week on my birthday, I lost a cousin. He just collapsed and he died. He was young, 37 years of age. Yes, of course, he was in South Africa, living his life there, different life from the one that we knew. He was a good guy. So I was reading Psalm 37. 
when I met Hakias Numa. Hakias Numa is commonly known as Holy Spirit. When I was distraught, troubled, asking God, why do young people die? Why do people who live a good life die? Why do people who pray, who have committed themselves to you, God, why do they die at such a tender age? When I was just contemplating on that, I then received a message from one of the pastor's group saying, Oh, the thieves have pounced on the base church and they wiped the church clean. And I was like, God, these are people who have committed themselves to you. Why do they have to go through all this court? And Hagias Numa came to me and he said, Be calm and see the deliverance of the Lord. He said to me, Do you know, Pastor? These people they think they own the land. They think they have so much power. And I said to Hagias Numa, you know what? These people, they know how to please the judges. You know? They know how to please the prosecutors. Most of the policemen, when you go and ask them how much of story, they know to the right note. Maybe they get the 10 percent from these guys. We don't know. So how does Yuma? How can you say I should go to fret? when evil men succeed in their own ways. He said, wait and see the deliverance of the Lord. When we read Psalm 37, verse 7 begins and says, Be still before the Lord. Be still before the Lord. You know, when all these bad things are happening, when all evil men prosper in our eyes, we look at them and say, why are we not making it as them? Why are they doing so well and we are not doing so well? It is the human eye, the world's eye, the view of success in a man's eye, not in God's eye. But how does woman comes and says, I am your conscience. I am that force that enables you to choose right from wrong. I am that spirit that comes and says, not this way, but this other way. And I say to him, where have you been all alone? You have just humor. Where have you been all alone? And you know that Alkias humor is Holy Spirit in Greek, huh? Alkias Holy. Numa spirit. Why have you been all alone? And he says to me, I have been up and about. <laughs> I have been there with you, but you have not acknowledged that I am there with you. You remember those days when things, <laughs> when you could do as you please, but I will say, not here, but here. And I said, I remember. Was it you? And he said, yes. Do you remember when we were about to cross the road and I said, stop, only to see the car that was fast, fast approaching your way? And I said, and I remember, I almost died. And he said, that was me who spoke to you. I have been there. The Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, according to John, is the presence of God at all times. The Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, according to John, is the comforter, the one who comforts us when we are troubled. So I asked Hakas Numa, where have you been? He said, when you were crying hopelessly, I was the one who comforted you. When you felt like there is no way out of the tunnel, he said, I was the light, I was the guide, I guided you all the way. How 
Agnes Numa, according to John, is paraclet, the teacher, the comforter, the conscience of the believer. And then when I went to John, John chapter 8, I met Jesus, who is arguing with so many people, especially his brothers, the Jews. All they wanted was to overthrow the Roman rulers. The Jews, they were bent on a principle, tooth for a tooth, eye for an eye. And Jesus Christ says to them, just like what my brother from South Africa, Steve Nico, once said, eye for an eye makes Africa blind. So Jesus Christ, when he speaks to the disciples, he says, if you keep my word, you are my disciples. If you follow my ways, you are my people. I once watched when people <coughs> were wanting to overthrow Hitler. There is a friend that I love called Dietrich von Mufa. He writes and he says, For how long shall we want injustice prevail? For how long are we going to find it? Those who are victims of injustice. And Paolo Ferreira, when he writes in his book, The Pedagogy of, of the Oppressed, he says, Many of us, we aspire the way of the revolution. We aspire to be dominators, not to be revolutionaries. For we want to be free so that we can dominate, not to be free so that the world is free. So when Christ speaks to his disciples, he says to them, you brothers and sisters, all you want is to lord it over the Romans and not to bring liberation. He reminds us in the book of Luke chapter 4, verse 18, when he speaks, when he's on that pulpit, he says, I have come to set you free. I have come to make the blind see. I have come to make the lame walk. I have come to liberate those who are in prison. So when I was arguing with Hattias Numa, my first friend, he says, I have come to liberate you. How can you liberate me? He, he pushes me fast and he says, read John chapter 16, verse 11. In John 16, verse 11, he ends by saying, the ruler of this world stands just. The ruler of this world has already lost his battle. The ruler of this world, he is the father of lies. Remember, Jesus is talking to the disciples, the Jews, in John chapter 8. He says to them, your father, the devil, your father, Satan. We all know the name Satan means liar, father of lies, the deceiver. He has deceived the world. The world thinks that he is in control. And I look in Psalm 37 and I realize that the wicked, the evil ones, they feel like they are in authority. But Christ says to us, as I go, know that one thing, know one thing that I have set you free. And this ruler of the world is lost in the battle. And Hakas Numa has come as an advocate for me. Brothers and sisters, I have been to court. I have seen many righteous men go to jail and wicked men live free, walking scot free, saying to us, you know what? There is nothing that you can do. We all in this court system. But the liberator, the hackers Numa, is saying, I am going to be your advocate. In everything that you will go through, in every circumstance that you will experience in your life, know that I am going to be the advocate. When they preached in that upper room, Peter, when he preached for the first time, the gospel says the spirit 
convicted them and they asked each other, what shall we do? When the Spirit comes on us, comes into this church, brothers and sisters, it will convict us of our evil and wicked ways. It will direct us into the path of our Lord Jesus Christ. I hope I am not making noise. Hagias <laughs> Numa, when he comes, he will reveal the truth. When he comes, he will reveal the truth. I have seen many people being arrested for telling the truth. And they have never gotten away for telling the truth. But Jesus, in John 8, verse 31, he says you will know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. This reminds me, brothers and sisters, of many people who have lost their jobs because other people have been plotting and finding lies around their lives. But do not worry. Do not worry. The Holy Spirit will reveal the truth. I have heard of so many people, brothers and sisters, who have been stagnant. I have heard of many people, brothers and sisters, who have lost all that they have worked for, all because of lies. When Hakias Numa comes, he will defend you. He will stand on your behalf. He will reveal the truth. And those who lie will be exposed. Remember when Jesus was on the cross, Lying naked on the cross, he said, Forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. But when he resurrected, it became open that indeed they had crucified the Messiah. So when the Spirit comes, brothers and sisters, it will set us free, and we shall be free indeed. Finally, when the Spirit comes, Hagias Numa, when he comes, he will bring justice. We are living in an unjust world. Can I mention a political case? Some friend was arrested for over a year and a half, and justice did not prevail. But when Christ comes, when the Holy Spirit comes, He will bring justice to the powerful. He will expose them and He will show them that they are not powerful. It might not be here on earth, but we know that in heaven the just shall live by faith, and God will bring justice. I come from a community, brothers and sisters. When you met my brother, before I bury him, I equip him with weapons of war. And I will tell you, arise and fight. And when they rise to fight, when the dead rise to fight, they do not only kill the one who has caused pain, they wipe out the whole family. <coughs> But when, when the Holy Spirit comes, He will not kill. He will show you of what you have done. I believe in heaven, justice will prevail. A film will be played of your day when you were born to the day you died. In heaven, brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit will bring justice to men. Do you have the Holy Spirit? If you have, in your wicked ways, change. Because the Holy Spirit is definitely going to reveal the truth. Because He is the revealer of truth. He will condemn the evil and He will set the land free. Do not fret because of evil men. The Holy Spirit is real and is He will reveal. Everything that is hidden and that is in the world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Thank you for listening. Your tithe or offering is greatly appreciated. Please see the bank details attached.